Hey, it's Jimmy from The Productive Engineer. And today I'm gonna to be showing you some tips and tricks I've learned using Taskade that can really help increase your workflow and get things done quicker. So let's just get into the first tip. Okay, so the first tip I wanna show you is how to use the new editor layout. This is the new editor layout as you can see here. It's much cleaner in my opinion. It makes it much easier to get things done. And one of the, the cool things about it is that they've really simplified sort of how you transition between views. So if you've used Taskade before, you know that they you, can, you view a project in several different views. You have a list view, as you can see right here, that I have right here going. You have board view. I'm going to click on that here. And you can see as I'm clicking along the top up here, I'm actually changing the view just by clicking the icon. And it actually puts it here as an action that actually arranges all my tasks by topic and then by date. And then here I have mind maps. If you prefer to view your project as sort of a mind map view, you can see here I have this tips and tricks video I'm working on. And when you look at it in my map view, uh, if I can scroll up, you can see uh, each subtopic and then all the different tasks underneath that topic. And it breaks out very much like a mind map. Lastly, you have org chart here, not really applicable to this particular product that I'm working on, but still, if you have a situation where org chart makes sense, you can just click on that view. The other thing you can do that's really cool is let's say I, I like board views. I can sit here and just I'll hover over the board view after I select it. Then just come over to the icon over here and just click. And that will actually set this the default view for this particular project as a board view. And, that, and the cool thing about this is you can have different views depending on projects by default. So if I have like five different projects, each one of them could have a different default view. So one of them could be a list view. One of them could be a board view. If you don't like that, you know, if you want to unset it, all you just got to do is hover over, click on the one that you want it to be, and then just click on the icon again. And it'll set it as list. And then next time you come in, it'll be a list or whatever you set it to. So really cool, quick tip there to sort of navigate how you use the new, new editor layout. Okay, my next tip is how to embed web content inside of Taskade. If you ever used another other productivity apps like Notion, for example, you're probably familiar with the idea of embedding web content into your Notion pages. Well, Taskade has the same concept. So you can actually embed certain pieces of web content inside of your Taskade projects, which makes it much more dynamic, in my opinion, because now you can sort of let's say there's a tutorial video that you want to include in a project or maybe you made a loom video and you want to embed that in there uh, as content for your project you can do, you can do that very quickly and i'm going to show you how to do that right now i have this little project here called embedding web content in taskade so i'm going to come down here and the way you add it in is you click where you want it to be and you click the little plus button and then there's a new option called embed and then you have your embed options so you have several options here YouTube probably could be the most popular one, but you also have some of the ones, you, if you're familiar again with Notion, you may have seen them there. Things like Whimsical, Figma, et cetera. So I'm gonna choose YouTube. Okay, and I'm gonna go get my URL and I'm gonna click embed. And as you can see, now my video is right here. I can click on it and just view it right here. And it'll open up the viewer and I can just play it. Or I can, but well, I'm not gonna do that right now, but because I'm obviously recording, recording my video here, I don't wanna mess it up. So basically that's how you embed web content in quickly and easily. You can, as I said, you, you can also embed multiple things. You can come in here again, choose embed and choose one of the other options. If you had a little video, if you had, you know, you had a whimsical project or something like that you want to embed in here, you can definitely do that. And I find that when you add video, a lot of times, like you say, video is worth, you know, a lot more than a thousand words in my opinion. I, I just butchered that metaphor, but you get the idea. Okay. So I'm on to my next tip and my next tip has to do with moving tasks. A lot of times you create tasks and you maybe you outline them like I did here. I'm going to show you my sort of my tips and tricks video outline here I've done. You might have a task that you have in a section or you have in a project that really belongs in another project or belongs somewhere else. You just want to move it. And the quickest way to do that in Taskade is you can actually come over here to ellipses. As you can see, actually when you hover over the ellipses, you, you get a little more descriptor. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to come up here to move to. I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to go to YouTube channel. And when I click on YouTube channel, it's going to give me all my projects inside of YouTube channel. Because YouTube channel is a workspace. And I can come here to move tasks. I actually created a project just to show you this. So I'm going to click that. And as you can see down here, that task is no longer here. That Canva task is not here. But if I go back and then I go in here to move task, you can see that my thumbnail for a video on Canva now shows up here. If I want to move it back. I could do the same by just clicking here more, going to move to, do the same thing, my space, 
my YouTube channel and then I can go into tips and tricks video hit back go back in there now the only thing is it's going to take it outside of my um, sub, sub process here so I can do is I come in here I want to put it back where it was I can just drag click and drag it up and now you can see it's right back where it was so pretty quick and easy really quick way to sort of move your tasks around I think a practical application for this would be let's say you just have one sort of scratch pad where you just create one project used up every task that you have to do across all your projects into it just to get sort of like a brain dump out of your you know get it out of your head and onto a digital canvas like you know Taskade and then later on you can once you have them all brain dumped out you can go through the sorting function and just assign them to the existing projects that you already have or create new projects and then move them over okay for my next little tip what I'm going to show you is how you can actually bulk assign tasks to people and if you have a lot of tasks and you kind of you know, you realize that like five or six of them belong to one person. Rather than going to each and every task individually and assign a person, you can actually select all of those tasks that are in that grouping and then just do a bulk assign. It obviously speeds it up in terms of just divvying out the responsibilities for your projects. And the way you do that is pretty easy here in Taskade. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag my mouse across all the tasks here. In this case, I'm doing the video editing. And when I do that, I get this little text bar down here. And it, it looks like it's just a text editing bar, but on the very end, you have an assign to button. So if I click that, I can actually come in here and assign it to somebody. In this case, I'm a one person team. This is kind of sad that I'm doing it this way, but you, if, the, if I had multiple team members here, they would all be listed here and I could choose that are assigned to this workspace. I'd be able to assign it to them. I'm going to set it to myself. I click that. And when I click it, notice what happened in the video editing section here. Now I'm assigned to every one of these tasks. So it's a quick and easy way of just sort of a quick bulk assigning all the tasks that are in a category to one person. Okay, so one of the next things I want to show you is really cool is sort of how tags work inside of Taskade and specifically how things like autocomplete and sort of filtering by tag work inside of Taskade. So first thing is when you assign a tag, you see I have a couple here. I have a Taskade tag up here for video planning and I have a regular tag that says task and then I have one here that says Taskade down here as well. And I did it's all of them. Yep, it's all the ones I have that's currently assigned. And I notice that here I have a task that is for task gate, so I can actually hit the hash key or the pound sign, depending on what you want to call it. And you want to start typing. As you start typing in your tag, it will actually start eliminating the ones that don't fit anymore. As you can see, as I typed in task gate, the only one that fits that is task gate, so I'll just hit enter here. Let's say I wanted to create a new tag. So I'm going to hit hashtag again. And I, let's say I want to call this research. As they're typing that, and notice I don't have a tag like that, so this because it's nothing's come up in filter. So I can come down here and just click it. And once I do that, now that's a real tag. So if I want to come out here and create my outline, and I hit, I want to add a tag to that. Notice now that research is an option. But as soon as I hit T, because research has to begin with T, it's automatically eliminated because it's auto completing as I go, which is really cool. Last thing I want to show you here for in terms of tags is. Let's say I want to see everything that's assigned to Taskade. So what I can actually do is come here into this project. I can literally just come in here, click Taskade, and guess what? The only things that show up now, it does an auto search for that tag. And I can actually it actually comes down here and only shows me the tasks that have that tag, which is really cool to me because like literally you're working in, I want to go up to the search bar, hit the hashtag, and then type it in. I can literally just click on the tag and then it'll automatically filter for all the all the tasks that have that tag. So a pretty cool piece of functionality there. Okay, so the next tip I want to show you is how highlighting works inside of Taskade. A lot of times you think you only have a couple of colors, but in reality you have a lot more. And highlighting works a little different and you're gonna see it when I do it. But basically let's say I want to highlight this embed a YouTube video to sort of give it emphasis. Now I have the five and when I do that I get the little text editing bar to come pop up above and I can obviously highlight here and I can use keyboard shortcuts to do that as well. But what happens if I don't want these five colors? I can come over here to the highlight colors, click on A, and choose which color I want. Now, the only thing I'll say about the highlighting is that it works a little differently than the way you might think if you haven't really used highlights inside of Taskade. Whereas you might be used to like the entire text being highlighted. When you highlight, it's more like a bold color underline. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So let's say I want to use an orange and I have 48 different colors to choose from here. So I can choose this orange and I click that 
when I do that, and I come off of it, you notice it's not really highlighted. I mean, it technically, it's more of like a really thick underline, but it work, It has the same effect, right? You can have multiple different colors. It definitely emphasizes the text that you want to use. And you again, you have 48 different colors, which is really cool if you get kind of bored and see all palettes or you just want something a little different. Okay, so my next tip is about how to import Markdown inside Taskade. So let's say you have some Markdown or Markdown file that you want to bring in. A lot of times you might be exporting out of one application. Let's say Notion, as an example, you have a page that you've exported. It's now it's a Markdown file. You want to import that potentially into Taskade or any other Markdown file that you just want to bring in. What you could do is create a little subspace for it and then create a new project. Come down here on this drop down when you click New Project, you'll get this Import option. You'll click that. And you get two options, Trello or Markdown. Trello is a Kanban-based project management service, but we want Markdown here, so we're going to click Markdown. You come over here, I have two different options. I can import it by just pasting the content in or actually uploading the file. I'm actually going to come over here. I have this Markdown file right here. I'm going to actually select the text here. I'm going to hit Copy. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to paste it in. Click Import. It's going to tell me done. And what it does is actually creates a new project in my subspace for that content. And as you can see, the H1 is sort of here. And it actually comes down. It takes the rest of the content and puts it in the way I had it before. So everything I had italicized is italicized. I have my lists. It does say list here. I'm not exactly sure why, but that's okay. And I have my lists here with, and it respects the markdown syntax of where I have had bold. Um, syntax it pulled in where I had italicized and italicized. So it works very clean and easy. I see that was really quick. I mean, admittedly, it was a small file. And now I'm going to actually delete this by going back and go here and then delete the project. Say OK. Now I have an empty project. I'm going to actually do the import again. So I'm going to show you how it works like when you import the file. And you have this little select file to upload. I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to see where I marked down import file right here. I'm going to hit open. It gives me the same message. I hit done. It gives me the same project. I hit open and it gives me the same exact file with all the formatting exactly the way it was when I cut and pasted it. So if you have a big file, as an example, you typically rather than have to select the whole thing and paste it into that little box, it's easier to just import the whole file. So either way, it works well. And that's sort of the quick tip for how to import Markdown into Taskade. Another really cool tip that I didn't even know about that I started actually researching a little bit is the idea of being able to drag and drop a file directly on top of a task and have it assigned to it. Really cool piece of functionality. So here I have several tasks here and one of them is to create an outline for the video. Let's say I created this outline and I just want someone to go in and like maybe make some modifications. I can actually click. I'm going to go off screen here, click drag my Word file. I'm going to come right here and you see where it gives me this little drop box here. And I'm just going to bring it in here. It gives that little plus sign. You just release the button. And then it actually brings in my file. It was a Word file. And I can actually click on this and open that file. So if I click on it, it'll actually download that file and I can open it in Word. So really cool. You can actually attach files here. You can see the file here. If you want to get rid of it, you hover over it. You click the little trash can button here and it'll get rid of it. I'll do that right now. And it'll give you a little, are you sure you want to do that? I'll say, okay. And then it's gone. And that's it. And it's, you know, everything's back the way it was. So very quick and easy. If you want to add a file to a task, you can just literally click and drag it on top of it. It's sort of really intuitive. I didn't even know you could do that. That was really sort of a cool feature. So you should try that out. If you have some documents that you want to assign to tasks in Taskade, just a really quick and easy way to sort of get those things aligned together and actually take that file and assign it to your task. So the next thing I want to show you is version history. And actually, actually a really qu quick tip here. So one of the things you'll be doing as you work on your projects inside of Taskade, you're going to be making lots of changes, right? And you may want to revert back to an earlier change. So the way you do that is you need to see your version history. So what you do is you go over here to the top of the window and you click the ellipses and you drag down to version history. And what will happen is, It'll actually show you all the changes that you made. And as you see, as I've been making this video, I've been changing this quite a bit. And I can go to any one of these and restore it. So I can go back to this is the current, I got the current version, I can restore it. I can go back several, every change I made, 
and actually undo them. And then the cool thing is it actually shows you in the window here. You can see I have my tags here. But before that, I didn't have the tags. The current version does have the tags. So I didn't add my tags until 736. I can keep going back. And then you can see the different changes that I've made. They, you can actually see them in the window in real time when I did certain things. So that's really cool because let's say you're not sure which one of these is the one that you want to restore from. You can actually go in, click one, and then scroll and make sure that it has all the content the way you wanted it and then do the restore. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to go back to current version and I'm just going to click outside of that box to sort of close that window. Now, one of the things that may be a little bit of a point of frustration here for you as a Taskade user, it was for me for a while, is this start call the chat dialog box that was always here and try to, you know, having that there, even I, I very rarely if ever use it. One of the cool things you do is if you use it great, you can have it open, but when you're not using it or if you don't use it at all, you can come up here to the little green bubble, text bubble here, and you can just click it or use the command and slash key to turn it on and off. And then what you can do is just click it. And as you can see, it toggles that window on or off. So most of the time, you're probably not going to be on a call. So you probably leave it off most of the time. Just a nice little UI enhancement that Taskade did to make things a little cleaner on your interface. Because I really like when I'm working on something, I want it to be minimalistic as possible and sort of have just the things I need in it. And if I'm not using the chat function, I just don't want to see it. So I, that's a quick way to sort of turn it off. The last thing I want to show you is let's say you have a project. If I wanted to go and export this project, I could actually export it by coming over here to the ellipses, scrolling down to export. And when I click that, it's going to give me several options. Now, if you're on a paid plan, you can export it as an image, but if not, you can use text, markdown or PDF. So we talked about markdown earlier. So if I wanted to do PDF, I can just click export as PDF. When I click that, it actually downloads down here a PDF file. And if I click open, you can see right here that my it's literally my entire project in a PDF format. You might want that obviously for a to-do list, that might be a little less, but let's say you, you want to hand out a list of tasks to everybody, or you had a bunch of other content, like written content, you know, documents, things like that inside of Taskade, and you wanted to export that that project. So you can basically have a physical copy or a backup copy, you know, or, or an original. If you want to just have something you can reference and mark up and then go back into task eight. Because a lot of people, some people like the paper and pen. I still do that as well, where you can basically print it out. I can kind of mark up my project. And then when I have everything the way I want it, go back into and change it up. Or, you know, I can share it with other people who may not be online or whatever, just, or sitting in a room together. We can just kind of bang it out real quick. So really cool. Just another way you can export it out. I'm going to close that window. And that brings me to the end of the video. If you like this video, I really hope you like did like it, by the way, and it was helpful to you. Please click the like button. It does help me out. It helps my channel out. If you like to see more videos about Taskade and other apps, I have a huge library of them on YouTube, on my channel. You should subscribe to my channel and see all the videos I come out with. And hopefully you'll find some that really are helpful to you and really enable you to get things done. That's really my intent with the channel is just teach you little tips and tricks and how to use various applications to really speed up your workflow. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks.